Welcome back to Proud Masculine. Today's video is going to be about boundaries. And you may see me looking away periodically. Typically, I'll, I'll do a video and, uh, you know, I'm speaking from, from the heart, from experience on the fly. And this is, like any of them, is a really important subject. But for this one, I've taken a few notes to try to keep it on path and not go all over the place. So you may see me look away periodically about uh, some notes I have jotted down. So anyhow, let's get into it. So boundary, simply defined, is a line that marks the limit of an area. As it pertains to having a personal boundary, is a limit set with you on what you'll accept of another person's actions or behaviors. And so in setting boundaries, first you got to understand having very clear boundaries and setting and enforcing boundaries is a critical life skill. And so basically, it's just a way to assert your values. And through, and you communicate that through the way your values and self-worth and through the way you clearly communicate, then enforce said boundaries, is how you communicate your values, your self-worth, your self-respect, and so on. Uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you communicate a boundary clearly, like if it's in a relationship, and that boundary has been crossed, and you've already communicated these boundaries as a behavior or otherwise behavior or words towards you, something messed up, something hurtful, that you will not accept some toxic behavior. And you allow that to slide without enforcing that boundary. What happens is that opens the door for that behavior to be repeated over and over. Ultimately, that communicates that you have no self-respect, no self-worth, and you can't be trusted. Because if you can't stand up for yourself and you're not willing to enforce the boundary the way you communicated it would be, then how it's subconsciously communicated that you will allow anything and you can't be trusted that you'll keep your word. And look, it's perfectly normal, it's perfectly healthy for someone who cares about themselves, who has self-worth and self-respect and values themselves and sees themselves as valuable to have healthy boundaries. And this is with family, with work, with friends, girlfriends, wives, children. You know, and so in setting these boundaries and in, in to being able to set the boundary, you have to know precisely what your boundaries are and be able to classify what each boundary is. Is it, is it something that perhaps could be, you know, repeated every so often with not being tolerated as you let it slide, but confront the situation, you know, talk about it and say, hey, look, you know, we've been over this. You know, this is unacceptable. You know, you did it again. And, you know, give an opportunity for that to be worked out through talking. Maybe a reminder like, hey, you know, you kind of understand how I feel about this and where I stand. This came up again. I know it's been a while. You know, let's make sure we don't keep repeating. Let's not make this a habit. And that's one boundary. There's another boundary that's uh, a non-negotiable. That's... No, you communicate it once, it's understood, and you make sure it's understood through that communication. Like, you know, do we understand? And if it's a yes, then it's an understood boundary. And if it's crossed, it's a non-negotiable. That relationship, whatever it may be, ceases to exist. It's terminated because said boundary was crossed. And so it's important to know what your boundaries are. What are your tolerances for each boundary? And, you know, I say take your time. 
I mean, literally, and this is what I've done in the past, and this is what I advise clients to do, write your boundaries out. Sit down carefully and write them. It may take a couple of days to where you write, write and classify each boundary. And also with the consequences for each boundary. And that way, when the time comes, you can communicate that boundary clearly. And I think this applies more into in a relationship where there's going to be a time when that conversation is going to be had where boundaries are set. You know, there's a clear line marked for, you know, your and expressing and communicating your values and what those are and how it would be dealt with accordingly. And, you know, and if there's one solid thing about a boundary is that it will be tested. It will be tested. Particularly, well, it's usually tested by everyone that you set a boundary with. And, and like I said, in a relationship, that's going to be a conversation you're going to have at some point. Early on. The earlier, the better. And obviously, you're not going to sit down on the first date and start talking about boundaries. There are some things that are going to be communicated about where you stand a little more subtly, more like some sub-communication about what you do approve and, dis and disapprove of. But it's not going to be, you know, a solid, you know, hey, I'm Joe. Well, you know, let's talk about boundaries before we order an appetizer. Not along those lines. But at some point, there will be a conversation about that. A lot of the other relationships and circumstances, the opportunity to communicate that boundary and enforce it, or at least communicate and classify the boundary, usually happens organically, like at work. You know, just as uh, an example, if you make a mistake and somebody calls you, hey, dumbass, you, you have an opportunity to let that person know they are not to talk to you like that. And... You know, if, if you're going to continue to talk to me like that, we're not going to be able to work together. And, you know, I will not tolerate, you know, being talked down to in that type of way, in that manner. But if you do have something to say, or if I have made, if I have made a mistake, or you see me about to make a mistake, please feel free to let me know. And I'll do my best to make sure it doesn't happen again. But I will not tolerate being talked to like that. You know, and that's... You know, obviously, you're not going to go hold a meeting at work with coworkers and superiors to discuss your boundaries, right? So, but the important thing is to communicate clearly, classify them. I don't know so much that you need to classify. If you have to communicate the classification of the boundary, that's more for you to have. But then, so... Take the time, slowly communicate, clearly communicate, slowly form these boundaries, slowly uh, develop an awareness of what your boundaries are. Take your time with that because it's a very important um, aspect of your life and how it affects your relationships day to day with everyone like I listed before. But enforce swiftly. Enforce quickly. If it comes up, it needs to be dealt with right then and there. It needs to be nipped in the bud. You know, and what I deal with with a lot of clients is uh, manipulation, like family uh, family member manipulation. Typically, it's the mother and son dynamic, or the father and son dynamic, the parental dynamic, where they seem to be easily. And I'm not saying, you know, their mother and fathers intentionally manipulate them. Some do. Some just have a way uh, of trying to get what they want from you through manipulation, whether it be through shame, guilt, or reminding you of what they did for you, you kind of owe them, you know, or just having, um, not being really supportive, kind of dumping on them all the time. I've, I've seen a lot of that. And there's a, a healthy opportunity to communicate and enforce a boundary. And I'll give you an example. This guy's mother one time would always dump on him about how he's 
could have done better. He's not trying hard enough. He's letting things slip away. He should move back home. You know, she needs his help. She, you know, she would guilt him into, you know, being in her presence more and helping her. At the same time, she was very negative, really like a wet blanket type personality, just negative, doom and gloom. And it just affected him. You know, and, and his experience was that this woman's, you know, being too emotionally involved and attached with this woman, with his mother, just kind of held him back and held him down. So there, right there, is an opportunity to communicate a boundary. Like, hey, look, you're my mother. I love you. I have the utmost amount of respect for you. But, like, you know, I need to live my own life. You know, it's time. I'm on my own. You have other resources you can use, you know, to get the help you need. You know, obviously, I'm here for you if you need. But, you know, and just, you know, frankly, I don't like the language you use when you speak to me. And uh, if you're not going to be supportive... And encouraging, you know, we can't communicate regularly. We're gonna have to be, we're gonna have to stay at a distance. And so when we do talk, you know, I'd appreciate it if you didn't bring it up, this, 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 and this, X, Y, and Z. So he did, he had an opportunity to do that, and he had to enforce that boundary. So the next time, and there's a sure thing that these boundaries absolutely will be tested. I can put a stamp guarantee on that. It's human nature. I don't know why. You know, think about it. Think about when somebody tells you, don't touch that hot stove, or no, you can't do this. It makes you want to do it even more. And that's typically the situation in a boundary, especially if someone's had some sort of power and control over you in the past, and you have to reactively set a boundary. You know, usually people that have you in a position where they already have this image of you. They already have you in this box. And that's where they want you to stay. That comfortable little box right where you fit. And when you start to show growth and self-respect and you, know, you start to understand your value and, and grow and level up, these people don't want to see that. That means they're, they're losing the control of you that they had, that manipulative control. So they will test that boundary. Only because you allowed it for so long. You know, just think you're going to keep allowing it, keep allowing it. And then they're only going to go from their perception of you, which as you know, you may have been a pushover or you may have accommodated them, you know, and they could use uh, tactics, shame tactics, guilt tactics to get what they wanted from you. And you would tolerate it. So, yeah, he's not going to be that serious about this time and, you know, the boundary will be tested again. They will try the same stuff, the same manipulation to put you back in that little container they have you in, back in that box. And it doesn't uh, support that narrative of you for you to change and grow. And this is most often the case. You know, in relationships, there can be some you know, firm boundaries that need to be set and enforced just as well. And it's important because what you display over the process of communicating uh, clearly and setting that boundary and then the opportunity to enforce it, that you should be and are to be taken seriously, that you have self-respect, that you know your worth, you know your value, and anything less and what you perceive as your values, self-worth, will not be tolerated. And if it is, then this is the consequence. This is how it's going to go. Whether this relationship's not going to go on or, you know, whatever consequence you assign to the boundary. But what that communicates is you're a man of your word. You can be trusted. You do value yourself. You do love yourself. You do respect yourself. So you will not allow that. And it conveys strength that you do have the strength to say it and mean it. And what will happen is, one of two things, obviously, either the person will respect the boundary or they won't. Then you have to go see that enforcement of the boundary too, you see that consequence through, whatever that looks like at the end of the day. But, however it goes, and look, it's gonna be tested 
you know, to see if you really mean it. Just because you said it doesn't mean you really mean it. And if you do mean it and you're willing to stick by and enforce the boundary, then that's going to work out in your favor in the end. It shows that you can be trusted. It shows strength, self-worth, self-respect. I've been over all that already. So, and look, it's, an, it's a critical life skill. And what happens is over time, you'll notice that the test begin to subside, the, bound, the testing of the boundaries subside, that you are internally, you start to develop this, uh, it's a deeper sense, a more meaningful sense of confidence and self-worth and self-respect. And you build off that, you slowly build off of that. In, in terms of a relationship, it does that improve the your stature and position in that relationship because the woman will know she can trust you. you what you say you're going to do, you, know, you do. You follow through, you see it through. And that allows her, and I know it's uh, kind of contradicts itself, but through not allowing that behavior is how you put yourself in a position of strength and power in that relationship where you can be relied upon, you are trusted, respected, you know, and all, you know, all the good things that come along with uh, a display of strength and holding a position in a relationship. And the same thing goes at work, you know. And a lot of times these boundaries come up after, you know, I'll work with a guy who's been, you know, beaten down or lost a relationship or just, you know, has had a hard run. And, you know, a lot of guys, you know, find themselves pushed into change out of a broken up relationship or an inability to get in one. And what they'll see is they lack the ability to say no and set those boundaries. So they're never really taken seriously. And that's another benefit of setting a boundary is that you it communicates that you take yourself seriously, that you better be taken seriously. If not, here's, here's the consequence. And, you know, a lot of these people turn in, for a lack of better word, just doormats, you know, pushovers, nice guys, you know, that don't like to say no, or, you know, kind of uh, cower and afraid when, and it all stems from fear, you know, those behaviors, fear you're not, gonna get what you want or lose what you have and uh, but at the end of the day saying yes to everything or not standing up for yourself ends up in losing you lose lose you lose yourself and you lose the position at work you know the friendship you're not gonna be taken seriously and laughed at in a relationship obviously you're not gonna give a sense of uh, you're not gonna project protection and strength and provisioning and you know, all these strong masculine characteristics that a woman looks for in a man in a relationship. So, um, yeah, if you need help with this, book a call, proudmasculine.com. And you can also follow me on Instagram at proudmasculine, just, or go to proudmasculine.com, uh, pricing, go down and book your time slot there. And, uh, you know, we can work on, I can show you how to set boundaries you know, by having a conversation and asking a few questions to see what your boundaries are and where you're lacking boundaries, you know, and put something together for you in that respect. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a, it's a healthy attribute to have boundaries for yourself as it pertains to every area of your life. And, you know, especially if you've grown up in a toxic household where you've been shamed and guilted a lot, it, you know, at first it's very difficult to set and enforce a boundary. You know, you almost feel like you're doing something wrong. I've been there. I've been through that, you know, years ago. And uh, it took a lot of practice, and you know, in setting these boundaries. But at the end of the day, when I forced the boundaries, things changed. Things changed drastically. And with my 
career look like, what my home life look like, what my friendships look like. And you'll start to see, you'll start tolerating less. You won't hang around with people who don't support you, who don't encourage you, who make you the butt of the jokes and, you know, work being overlooked because you can't be taken seriously because you let everybody walk over you. You know, that changes. Look, it's, it's a... It's a healthy form of self-love and self-respect to have a boundary, communicate your boundary, and enforce your boundaries. So um, well, that's all for this one. We'll see you on the next one.